by the Parliament of Ghana in memory of the late Major Maxwell Adamahama. When a great man dies, for years the light he leaves behind him lies on the path of men. Henry Wordsworth Longfellow. Indeed, in the midst of life, there is death. Those who have left a good life do not fear death, but meet it calmly, and even long for it in the face of great suffering. But those who do not have a peaceful conscience dread death as though life means nothing but physical torment. The challenge is to live our lives so that we will be prepared for death when it comes. This simple truth was poignantly brought home to us on that fateful day, Monday, the 29th of May, 2017, when we walk to the news that the son of the soil, a gallant soldier, Captain now Major Maxwell Adam Mahama of the Ghana Armed Forces, had passed on to higher glory. He did not die on battlefront. He did not die from a stray bullet in peacekeeping. He did not die in his sleep. He did not die from ill health. His life was snuffed out of him by men and women of the land. His crime, he had gone to protect the people against the ills being inflicted on the land by people. The land he sought to protect took his life away. And now we are faced with the challenge of telling his children that their father went to the river and did not return. His widow has a far away fallen look in her eyes. We wonder what her thoughts are. In these days of sundry carnage, death no longer appeared to agitate the conscience of men and women. Yet, the gruesome and dastardly murder of Major Maxwellada Mahama has clearly stamped the entire nation. We all are in a state of genuine shock and dismay. So devastated, unable to control our emotions, that a group of people, citizens of this land, meted out such wicked, barbaric, and brutal murder to a fellow innocent citizen for unjustified reasons clearly defies human comprehension. One wonders, even when at the peril of his life, he refused to use his gun to shoot his way out to save his life in self-defense. At that material time, he had the power to conquer death. Yet, he embraced death when death beckoned. Even at the face of death, he refused to kill his fellow human beings. A gallant soldier, well-trained, living up to the tenets of his training. He was given to reasoning and rationalization, which did not matter to the men and women of Venom, who went ahead to shatter his body into smithereens and finally torched the body. That he met his untimely death in such an unfortunate manner is most reprehensible and merits the highest form of condemnation by the well-meaning and good-natured. The questions are many. Why did they not believe him? Or did they believe him but decided to kill him anyway? Did they not know that he was a well-trained soldier, a captain, soon to be a major? Did they not see any good in him? 
the pleas in his eyes. Was his voice not all enough? We in Parliament are highly impressed with his career as a young military officer. I would urge all your colleagues to emulate such sterling qualities that you displayed, even in death. We wish to express our sincerest condolences to the military high command and the entire Ghana Armed Forces for this irreplaceable and unprecedented loss of one of his oxygen bearers. We urge you to take a deep breath. The Almighty God will grant you fortitude and courage to withstand this great loss. Our parliament has a relatively young generation with high hopes of successful careers like the one that our fallen hero had. A loss like this is truly one that is most irreplaceable. If our green leaves are falling, how will the trees survive? The nation is on its knees and we ask, where is our God in whom we trust? But we find solace in the fact that God is all knowing and even in our deepest sorrows, he does all things for the good of those who trust in him and so we lift up our prayers and say, O oh, Heavenly Father, we pray for strength in these difficult times and moments. Teach us acceptance of what we cannot understand. Teach us understanding of what we cannot change. For our lives, dear God, are in your hands. You will give life and sustain life and grant eternal life. You and you alone, God, know us individually in our deaths. You and you alone know the sorrows in our hearts. Keep us, confirm us, and surround us with the life and presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who loves and holds our beloved Maxwell before your holy throne. We thank you, Father, even through clouded eyes, that through your son, our beloved Maxwell lives in your eternal kingdom. Maxwell, your bravery precedes you. The entire nation is united in the conclusion of what you represented. And that is why Parliament suggested that a befitting monument be erected to mark a watershed to end mob injustice in our national life. It is also the reason Parliament joins ranks with His Excellency, the President of the Republic, that the funds be set up to take charge of your charges on earth. So we say, begone unbelief. We say to you, Major Maxwell Adam Mahama, Jenny on, gallant soldier, Jenny on for the good Lord are ways to embrace you warmly. Amen.